Hi, this is Professor Fernandez, and in this video, we are going to work out an example of using the binomial series. This example comes from the notes from Lesson 16 in this Calc 2 course. You'll find those notes on this website, along with these other resources. So what does the example say? So it just asks us to show that the Maclaurin series for 1 plus x to the a um, is this particular power series um, for negative 1 to 1. So there's really two parts to this example. Um, one of them is calculating the Maclaurin series of this function to actually get what we call this entire series, the binomial series. Um, I actually do that in the lesson notes for this uh, video. So that's again, zooming out here, uh, the notes for lesson 16, you can find that on that website. Um, and so I won't do that in the video, all the calculations are in the lesson notes. What I want to focus on is on the interval of convergence. Um, because we certainly have had a lot of practice calculating Maclaurin series. And I'll send you over to videos 13.1 and 13.2 if you want a refresher on doing that. This is technically for Taylor and Maclaurin polynomials. But Maclaurin series just, you know, if effectively take the Taylor polynomial uh, or Maclaurin polynomial calculation and just add the dot, dot, dots, right? You just keep adding terms according to the general pattern that you found from calculating the Taylor or Maclaurin polynomial. Okay, so really what I want to do in this video is focus on the interval of convergence, uh, really the radius of convergence. We'll do just that. So um, we are going to be using the ratio test for that. So if you want a refresher on that, that's in videos 10.1 and 10.2 in this playlist. So then let's go back here and show that this Maclaurin series for the function 1 plus x to the a um, which uh, we're going to take as given, again, uh, calculations are in the lesson notes, that uh, is equal to this binomial series, actually um, converges on this interval. Okay, uh, We don't really want to worry about the endpoints here. The behavior of the um, Maclaurin series at the endpoints requires a lot of uh, different types of analyses, and it can get quite uh, involved depending on what the value of a is. I do have that information in the lesson notes as well, if you're curious, so I'll send you there for that as well. So really what we want to show here, looking at this interval, this is absolute value of x less than 1. Um, we would like to show that the radius of convergence of the binomial series is 1, right? So that's what I'm after in this uh, video. So um, we've covered radius of convergence in previous videos also. I want to say maybe videos for less than 11 or 12, poke around the playlist to check that out. So what I'm going to do is apply the ratio test to the binomial series to find that radius of convergence. Um, and as I've mentioned before in those videos in lesson 10, I'm going to take this entire term to be the a sub n. So I've written out some of the work here to save us time. So this is a sub n. Everywhere I see an n, I need to find a sub n plus 1. So I just put an n plus 1 in all those places. And then I'm going to look at the absolute value of the ratio of these successive terms. Right. So here's a n plus 1, and here's a sub n. Um, and here I am writing this out, a sub n plus 1. Notice first, let me start with a sub n, right? Uh, this is the numerator here. This is <clears throat> um, a choose n. So that's the binomial coefficient. If I scroll down over here and zoom in there, that's what this is. Okay. So anytime I, I write a sub n, it's a shorthand for multiplying a times all the numbers below it up to 1 less than n and then dividing the result by n factorial, right? So that's the shorthand when we write um, this notation here, uh, the binomial coefficient a n. OK, so that's what's over here, right? Um, and then there also used to be, notice, I'll go back and, and point it out with more, um, uh, be more careful about pointing it out, I should say. This is an x to the n down here. This is an x to the n plus 1, which is x to the n times x to the first. So that and that cancel. Um, and we're left with an x to the first inside the absolute values, which comes out. And I've written it here as uh, a multiplicative factor. So that also explains why the only thing left in the denominator is this a choose n binomial coefficient, which is all of this. It also helps explain the numerator, right? If we want to write out a choose n plus 1, then um, What's the pattern, right? So first, the denominator of a choose n is the same thing factorial. So n plus 1 here, denominator would be n plus 1 factorial. And then second, if I declutter things here, the numerator right, of, of this is a multiplied by the numbers less than n, the whole numbers, if you will, all the way down to 1 less than n. n is the number that was down here. 
So to find this one, we do the same pattern, but we go one further because one less than n plus one is n. Okay, so that explains why the numerator looks the way it does. And at this point now, we can go ahead and do some simplification. So um, looking at the denominators, first of all, n plus one factorial, we can write that as n plus one times n factorial. And then that means that this n factorial and that n factorial cancel. And then notice the way I've written it out that this entire term in the numerator here is exactly here as well. So they cancel. You know, it might be a little weird to be working with so many fraction bars, but I'll just remember if we do like three over four divided by like three over nine, right? That's three over four divided by three over nine which is three over four multiplied by nine over three, so the threes cancel. So one thing we learned from this you know, simple little illustration is that the numerator here can simplify with the numerator up here. You know, it can cancel or factors can be canceled. And the same thing with then the denominator here and the denominator here. Um, so that's why I canceled this portion of the denominator here with this portion of the denominator over there. And why I also canceled this numerator with that numerator. Uh, at least the, the box portion. Okay, so I've written a lot. So let me erase, oops, not erase, there we go, and then show you what is left. So what's left when we do all these cancellations? First of all, we have the absolute value of x left over. Um, the box in the numerator here goes away. So we're left with a minus n. The denominator, the only thing left is n plus one. And over here, all of this got canceled. <laughs> so that was really a, a, a really simplified things over here. Um, now I want to write this in a, in a way that's going to be more suggestive of what's going to happen in a minute. I would like to factor out a negative out of the numerator so that it's n minus a over n plus 1. And then because of the absolute values, that negative doesn't do anything. And then n minus a over n plus 1. And then the denominator is uh, never negative because it's n plus 1. So I'll write that as n plus 1. And then the uh, n minus a in absolute values. Okay, the last step in the ratio test, therefore, is to um, take the limit as n goes to infinity of this absolute value of ratio of successive terms. So limit as n goes to infinity, absolute value a n plus 1 over a n, and then that's everything down here. So we have limit as n goes to infinity of absolute value of x over n plus 1, absolute value of n minus a. The absolute value of x pulls out to the outside, doesn't have an n in it, so it doesn't uh, change as, the, as n goes to infinity, which is um, what we're looking for in the limit. So now we're just left calculating this. Okay, so I've left the absolute values in because we don't know what a is, right? Um, a is some number that is the exponent of 1 plus x to the a, right? Um, but we don't know what it is numerically. Um, if it's bigger than n, then the absolute value n minus a makes that negative number positive. Um, if it's you know less than n, then we don't need the absolute values. But here's the thing, right? Let's think about what's happening. n is going to infinity. So whatever a is, it's some finite number like 7, negative 4, 39, whatever. Um, because n is going to infinity, eventually n is going to be bigger than a. So this is really going to have the, this limit is going to have the same value as this limit n minus a without the absolute value over n plus 1. Okay? Um, and here, this is just a type of limit we've done many times in this course. So many different ways to analyze it. Uh, my favorite way is just to think about the growth of the terms in the, in the respective um, uh, numerator denominator. So if n goes to infinity, the 1 really doesn't matter uh, in terms of what term dominates in terms of growth in the denominator. Same deal here. a might be a really giant number, like a trillion, but n is going to infinity. So that's not going to matter. So this limit is going to tend toward n over n, which is 1. And then multiplying by the absolute value of x that we had originally gives us absolute value of x. And then remembering that in the ratio test, right, you only get convergence if the limit is less than 1, right? If the limit equals 1, you get inconclusive. You got to do something else. If the limit is bigger than 1, divergence. So it's really less than 1 that gives you convergence for sure. Um, and that pops out for us this um, nice interval 
you know, really this is the rate, this tells us that the radius of convergence is one, but if you unravel this, it tells us that minus one less than x less than one for all these x values, the uh, binomial series converges, right? And that's what we wanted to show in this video. Um, for x equals one, for x equals negative one, as I mentioned earlier, the convergence really depends on a. There are certain a values for which it converges, certain a values for which it diverges. And I'll send you again to the lesson notes for that information. So um, great, to recap the Maclaurin series, for one plus x to the a is known as the binomial series, this thing. Um, this thing in the middle here, uh, down here, right, is known as the binomial coefficient, a choose n. Uh, and really, when we actually calculate the Maclaurin series, right, these are the terms that we get. Um, so we're taking 1 plus x to the a and we're expanding it as 1 plus ax, right? Notice that that first term just brings down this a and multiplies it, so ax, so 1 plus ax. Um, and then if you look at the pattern, right, every successive term, like we had talked about earlier, takes that a, subtracts 1, and then divides by one more. And then this term right here would be a, a minus one, a minus two, subtracting one more, divide by three. These are factorials, right? Two factorial happens to be two, that's why there isn't a factorial there. So the pattern is, is fairly easy to remember if you work with this series enough. Um, but again, this binomial coefficient is sort of a shorthand for it. So that's the binomial series. We've shown that the radius of convergence is one, and then we talked a little bit about convergence at the endpoints depending on the A value. Thanks for watching.